Begin by safely raising and supporting the vehicle. Please follow the link provided at the end of this video for additional assistance with that task. Make sure you get the vehicle as high and as level as you can. You will want the extra room under it. Disconnect the ground from the battery and set it aside where it cannot accidentally make contact with the post while you are working. Be prepared to loosen or remove the intake manifold if needed for space. Follow the link at the end of this video for additional assistance with that task if needed. If you have a single crossover pipe, you will need to remove the fuel rail and injectors. Again, please follow the link provided at the end of this video for assistance with that task. If you have a single crossover pipe, you will also need to remove the intake manifold. Again, please follow the link provided at the end. Next, remove the crossover pipe. If you need additional assistance, again, please follow the link. Remove your reference sensors. Again, follow the link. Next, remove your muffler. After that, you will need to remove the transaxle. You will have to follow the link provided at the end of this video for additional steps on that as there are too many procedures to fit in the length of this video. Remove your starter motor. Again, if you need additional assistance, you can follow the link provided at the end of this video. Disconnect the wiring harness for the starter motor from the bell housing and slide the wires out of the way. Red and yellow arrows. Remove the clutch slave cylinder, red arrow, from the bell housing and let it hang out of the way. Disconnect the hydraulic line from the bell housing. You will need to remove the two 13mm bolts holding the shift lever from the torque tube. You will have already removed the linkage from the shifter when removing the transaxle. Remove the shifter from the tunnel. You're going to remove the rest of the exhaust system. Depending on the condition of the exhaust system, you may have to improvise if yours has been hacked and welded together. Begin by disconnecting the turbo wastegate pipe, which is connected to the torque tube, yellow arrow, from the main pipe, and then the main pipe from its hangers, red arrows. Remove the clamp for the wastegate pipe, red arrow. With the wastegate pipe disconnected, you can slip the main exhaust pipe off its hangers and set it aside. Remove the heat shield from the left side of the tunnel. Disconnect the vacuum line from the top of the pop-off valve or wastegate indicated by the red arrow. The wastegate is secured to the torque tube by a metal bracket. There are two 13mm bolts that go into 14mm nuts welded on the bracket, red arrow. Remove the lower bolt and then turn the bracket until you can get access to the upper bolt, red arrows. Remove the upper bolt and bracket and wastegate from the tube. Remove the four 10mm bolts and the heat shield from the center tunnel, red arrows. You are going to be sliding the torque tube towards the rear. You will need to rotate it 180 degrees to get it to clear the torsion bar tube at the rear. You want to loosen the exhaust hangers, yellow arrows, but do not remove them. Remove the rubber hangers. This will allow you to rotate the tube within the tunnel. Support the engine from below with a piece of wood to protect the oil pan and a jack or from above with an engine support. You're going to be separating the torque tube from the bell housing. You do not want the engine just supported by the engine mounts. Remove the four 17mm bolts holding the torque tube to the bell housing and indicated by the red arrows. Remove the two 17mm bolts, green arrows, holding the transaxle carrier, yellow arrow, from the vehicle to give you enough room to pull the tube back far enough to clear the bell housing. Rotate the torque tube and shift rod, red arrow, 180 degrees and slide it back towards the rear of the car, making sure the hangers do not get jammed up in the tunnel and the tabs on the tube do not damage the brake lines. 
Remove the 10 millimeter clutch release lever retaining bolt from the clutch housing located just above the starter opening. Red arrow. Insert a 150 millimeter long 8 millimeter bolt into the release lever pivot shaft. Red arrow. You can use one of the bolts that mounts the transaxle to the carrier. Place a set of vice grips on the bottom of the bolts. Gently tap the shaft out from the bell housing. Yellow arrow. Remove the four 19mm bolts holding the torque tube to the bell housing. Red arrow. You may need to tap the housing with a rubber mallet to get it to separate from the engine block. Remove the bell housing and inspect the clutch release arm. Red arrow. And the guide tube. Yellow arrow. After all of this work, replacing these items are usually considered a while I'm in there replacing now thing. Inspect the guide tube for any wear. I always replace this part as it is the only time it is easy to get access to. Inspect the release arm carefully for cracks or bending and if you can afford it, replace the arm. At a very minimum, replace the two needle bearings in the arm by pressing out the old ones and pressing in new ones. Red arrows. Next, you're going to remove the 8mm 12-point bolts holding the pressure plate to the flywheel. Red arrow. It's a good idea to wake the bolts up by inserting the socket and tapping each bolt with a hammer a few times. Loosen each bolt working in a crisscross pattern and do not loosen one bolt more than one turn at a time. These bolts are under tension from the springs in the pressure plate. You want to keep them even while removing and installing. Have someone hold the pressure plate while you're doing this to stop the engine from turning. When the bolts are removed, the pressure plate is free and will fall. It's fairly heavy, so make sure you have a good grip on it when removing it. You are going to be replacing the pressure plate, red arrow, and the clutch plate, yellow arrow. Inspect the clutch plate for wear. If the plate has worn down to the rivets, red arrows, there is a good chance you're replacing or resurfacing the flywheel. Inspect the flywheel for scorching, cracks, grooves, or excessive wear, and resurface or replace as needed. Please follow the link provided at the end of this video for detailed instructions on that procedure. The new release bearing and pressure plate come as separate pieces. You may or may not need to reuse the snap ring. If you are reusing the pressure plate, you will need to remove the old release bearing. You can have a friend stand on the pressure plate to compress it while you remove the snap ring, yellow arrow, from the release bearing, red arrow, or you can place it in a press. You will not be able to remove or install the snap ring without compressing the fingers in the pressure plate. Pay attention to the order while removing old parts to ensure proper order when installing the new parts. There are two spacers on the release fork side of the bearing. The fingered spacer, red arrow, goes on first, then the thin spacer, yellow arrow, and then the release bearing, green arrow, drops in. On the plate side, install the larger spacer, red arrow. Compress the plate and install the snap ring, yellow arrow. Once everything is installed, there should be a small amount of movement between the release bearing and the pressure plate. Installation is the reverse of removal. You will need to use a clutch alignment tool to align the clutch plate with the flywheel and pressure plate when installing the new clutch and pressure plate. You will install the clutch plate in the pressure plate, install the alignment tool, and then use the tool to align everything up with the pilot bearing. Make sure that the clutch, pressure plate, and flywheel are all clean and free of contaminants or grease. Lube up the spline on the torque shaft. Take your time and reinstall everything, paying attention to replacing anything that looks damaged or worn as you go. This is also a good time to bleed your clutch slave cylinder. Congratulations, you have just completed one of the most difficult jobs there is. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out another video in this series.